Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. The topic of our lesson today is the test of discipleship. And Pastor Salazar and I look forward to uh, going through this study with you as we finish up this week's set of lessons on trials, tribulations, and lists. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we again open your word today, we are thankful for your many blessings to us uh, in the past, including today. And so we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit, that you would guide and direct us, that uh, your word may make a difference in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In a recent lesson, uh, we read the following statement from the book, The Great Controversy. This was from, from page 478. It is only as the law of God is restored to its rightful position that there can be a revival of primitive faith and godliness among his professed people. Um, we could probably spend the whole time, David, just on that statement right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, and in a sense, we we, we are going to do that today. <clears throat> um, the first is there's a warning here that we can profess to serve God, we can profess uh, to be um, well part of the remnant church, just as God's people in the Old Testament um, often professed to be His servants, but in reality they they weren't doing that. What makes the difference? Well, it's again in this statement right here. It is only as the law of God is restored to its rightful position. Um, now, we've studied more than once here what the rightful position of God's law is, according to Hebrews 8, verse 10, and other similar verses. God has promised to write his law on our minds and our hearts with his Holy Spirit. This is the rightful position of God's law, not something that's just chiseled in stone, not something that's just displayed uh, in the foyer in the church, or maybe even in the living room at home, but something that is truly written and embedded in our minds and our hearts so that it makes a difference in how we live our lives. And Tim, you and know, today we're, uh, sorry, uh, I, just to sort of, re, you know, remind uh, our friends, our listeners that when we really look into the Word of God, into His law, uh, as its right place, we are going to also look more at Christ. You know, Christ is exalted even more as well. And so it, it's really, uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, uh, as we re restore uh, and exalt the law in the right place, God, because it transcribes his character, Christ, and and the God, you know, the Godhead is exalted as well. So it's, it's not, you know, you take one in place of the other. It's really both are exalted to the right place. And thank you for that reminder and clarification, because that's absolutely correct. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, we have this beautiful promise. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When we have Christ, we have his law written in us as well. So uh, it all centers in our relationship with our Savior and Redeemer. Practically speaking, then, what does this look like? when this relationship with Christ is there, when it's growing each day? What does it look like, practically speaking, when uh, the principles of God's Word are being uh, becoming more and more of how we think and react, uh, part of our words and actions? We're just going to look at some verses today that uh, will give us a better idea of what this looks like. And a lot of these are well-known verses that uh, we know that uh, we've probably all heard or read before, but they're good reminders for what God wants to do in our lives. Uh, David, let's go first to Galatians chapter 5, very well-known passage uh, regarding the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and um, trying to talk and turn there at the same time. It's kind of like patting your belly and rubbing your head. <laughs> but here we go. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, five yep. verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such 
there is no law. Um, and these are the things that God is is looking for in each of our lives, isn't it? Absolutely. He wants us to have this fruit of the Spirit. This is a result of that connection, that relationship with Christ and the Holy Spirit being that gift that the Lord promised to us, to, to those that have accepted him and by faith claim his promise. They receive the Holy Spirit, and of course the fruits are given in this experience. You have this, uh, your life will testify that you're with Christ because there's fruits that follow that. There's, by your fruits you shall know them. You know, there is, there is results, there is tangible evidence that you are in Christ and Christ is in you. So this is a very important aspect. Uh, we also have, uh, for example, in Micah uh, chapter 6, verse 8, this verse that says, He has shown thee, O man, what is good, and what the Lord required of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. So here we see, again, uh, you know, an example of that life, of that living experience with God. You are walking humbly with God, you know, to do justly, to love mercy. This is the, you know, this is the balance uh, of a Christian walk. You know, you have mercy, you have love in your heart, but you do justly. You love justice and you love the law. This is this is part of, of walking with Christ. You know, this is part of being a disciple with the Lord. Yeah, amen to that. Another passage um, we can look at is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. And um, Peter here is, well, he's writing a verse that we often talk about in regards to Christian standards, but verse 3 starts this way, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price." And the real point here, you know, is um, God is looking for us to place our emphasis on those inward qualities of character that uh, would reflect him rather than on, you know, external things that might be attractive to us or to other people. And there's even, we could probably draw an interesting parallel, David, with a comparison between the wilderness sanctuary that Moses built and some of the later temples. Um hmm. That that initial sanctuary was pretty primitive, wasn't it? You know, animal skins. And um, looking on it from the outside, just some fabric and boards and so forth, a little bit of bronze maybe. But inside it was beautiful, wasn't it? Gold, beautiful mm. tapestries, and of course the Spirit of God him, or God himself was there um, above the mercy seat. As you move down through history, we could compare that to the temple in Herod's time when, when Jesus was alive. The structure was magnificent, uh, smaller but similar to Solomon's temple, uh, you know, just beautifully adorned with carvings and, and marble and very expensive uh, furnishings, but yet the spirit uh, of what was going on inside, in many ways, God had been driven from that temple. And uh, just a very interesting comparison between those two. And I think there's a lesson there for each one of us. Where is the focus in my life? Is it on those external things that society tells me is so important to pursue after? Or is it on the uh, more unseen things that God wants me to focus on? You know, well, it is, has to do with the heart. You know, it has to do with um, our our living connection with Christ and really wanting to follow his ways. I mean, and that is a reformation of the heart, you know. It's not just saying the words, I have a relationship with God, and yet my life lives, you know, I'm, I'm completely living like the world. That, that doesn't make sense. That's an oxymoron, you know. That's not a real Christian, but that's just a professed Christian. And at the same time, you, you know, you're right. We have to be careful that we're not adorning or we're not doing things that exteriorly seem to be Christian, like the Pharisees were perfect at doing that. You know, they acted all pious and righteous, but their heart was corrupt and full of, you know, filth and sin. So it's it's about, you know, asking God, please create in me a new, a clean heart, oh God, and renew a rest period within me. And yet my actions and my words be 
a reflection of that transformation in my heart. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I remember in Matthew chapter 6, there in verse 31 to 33, we have this, uh, these words of Christ that talks to us about what we should really seek after, what should be what we feed our mind or our, our life with. And it says, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do this Gentile seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So here we, Christ is telling us, don't look after the things that the world seeks after. Don't look after, you know, search after clothes or money or food or what have you. Even those things that are good in themselves, that are necessary, don't look for them. You need to look what's really important, which is the kingdom of God, his righteousness. And then all these things will be added to you. So I think this is very important to keep in mind. What am I putting in my mind? What am I feeding? What's more important? And, you know, what I'm putting my efforts really in. Hmm. Amen. First John chapter two, verses three and four say this. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Very simple test that can keep us from self-delusion and deception. And that is, what is my attitude toward the counsel that God has given? And I would include the uh, spirit of prophecy in this counsel as well. That Mm -hmm. is also God's word to us today. What is my attitude toward what we are told about what God's will is, either for us personally or for his church today. And uh, there's a warning here in 1 John 2. Uh, you know, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. In other words, it's possible to believe that I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, and yet, if I am not deliberately and consciously humbling myself before God and saying, I will follow the counsel given, uh, it's a deception, ultimately. This this leading that I think is the Holy Spirit very well could be another spirit. Uh, you know, we're told to test the spirits. The Bible warns us about this. And how do we test it? Well, we come back to the word that God has given to us. And, and Tim, you know, it, it's sad, but this is a word of God, the authority of God that says, he that said, I know him. You know, how many of us will say that? to one another. Oh, I know the Lord. I I love God. I love Jesus. I have a relationship with him. But this is very clear, very plain. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. This is, you know, um, there's no second alternative. You know, either you are truly in Christ, or you are the son of Satan, you know, the father of all lies, which is Satan himself. And it's a solemn uh, admonition that we need to keep in mind. Um, am I seeking the Lord to do his will? Am I seeking to do and honor his commandments? As you mentioned, seek the counsel given to us through the prayer of prophecy, keeping the Sabbath holy, keeping the, 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 the instructions given to us as a people. Or am I saying just the words, but really rejecting what has it given me? I think this is a very mm-hmm. solemn warning for us. And definitely, I pray that we can pass this test of the discipleship. Let's end with a great promise, Second John 2, verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby Amen. know that we are in him. This promise is for each of you, uh, friends that are listening. God wants to. He's promised that he can and will perfect his love in you, in your family in your church if we just give them a chance. Thanks for listening, and we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.